That little game when you doctor, when you pull tweezers and try and pull bones out of a body. That's what I feel like I'm trying to do with this. It's physics, math, and engineering. Machine it, draft it, build it, test it, break it. Every time something new gets built, the entire world advances. Laying in bed at night, it's designing new parts, designing new suspension, designing new wings. Hey, I'm Mike Patey. On this video, we're gonna do a whole bunch of little catch-up items, little knickknacks on this crazy backcountry cub with silly horsepower, monster suspension. Make sure you like and follow and subscribe because we got some rocket launches, all kinds of crazy landing gear components. Let's get this aircraft built. As always, back to work. All right, guys, I'm about to show you one of the longest, biggest projects. It's not gonna feel like I have much to show you. And it was a pain in the butt and it took all day. I don't even think I've got 16, 18 hours in and definitely I'm not chasing sunlight tonight. I'm beat. I've had it. I've been upside down, inverted, all over the place. I'm all burned up. I've been attaching tabs like these all the way throughout the plane. It is a tedious long project <laughs> welding all of those. Custom bent. I mean, there are bars that are further away, closer, different arcs. So every tab has a different bend, a different shape, a different angle, different hole. I want the lines to line up. So this has been a nightmare, <laughs> but I'm super excited because it's done. I'm going to call it quits um, early tonight. And, uh, but let me show you some of the things we got done. I mean, it's tabs like these, like these. And what's really cool is I needed the frame to get really rigid, not twist. I wanted to make it super quiet. So everywhere I've got a tab that I bolt the carbon fuselage to the tube frame, I isolated it with a piece of rubber. That way, when I put it together, I don't get any vibration, no chafing, and no galvanic corrosion between carbon fiber and steel. So all those things are done. The frame isn't gonna twist. It should be one of the quietest, well, other than the engine, one of the quietest, silent, no air movement cubs. I'm gonna really seal this up tight. Every door, everything's gonna be rubber sealed. So it should be a really quite quiet and comfortable cub. So, even things like little project, well, maybe not little, but this is a floor pan, another fo floor pan, all custom shaped. I don't know if you can even see on here all these little square points were where I wanted a weld tab for a bolt. So, and then the back wall, I used a piece of metal with creases in it to make that shape. The back wall's done for the rear bulkhead and the luggage compartment. All of those, a whole bunch more, and the fuselage, and the top, all the tabs are done. So that is a huge step, and I feel like I got only this to show you. So, But I'm really close to sending this off. I want to get this frame painted, coated up well, and then we can go into final assembly. So I got a few more things to do, some flat panels, a few more miscellaneous small items. The list is maybe at max 20 items left of things I need to weld before I'm done. So I mean, I am on the short end of a very long list. So I'm excited. It's not even AM. I'm out of here. I'm gonna get some rest. Back to work tomorrow. All right, guys, I'm really excited. I finally get to do something I've wanted to do for over a month, and that's go ahead and cut out all three luggage doors. So I've finally got them all laid out perfectly. I've got all the bolt points throughout the whole plane. There's 150 and counting. It's gonna hit over 200 easily of actual bolts bolting the carbon fiber to the fuselage. There's several, there's, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six areas that the carbon fiber passes through and makes partition walls that are rounded out of carbon fiber that then are bolted to the outside weld tabbed to the frame. So as you go down this, this arc in this tube is forced to hold an arc, welded to a frame, and then bolted to the outside. So this tube is locked all the way down with ribs, basically rounded ribs. So this thing is gonna be solid, solid, solid. So I had to get all those weld plates in before I wanted to cut this out, make sure that none of those weld tabs or walls were inside 
and I finalized all my luggage dividers. So that's one luggage, goes into a huge bay. Another belly pod luggage, another belly pod luggage. This line represents where I'm cutting out for a carbon fiber hinge. This will open up. The bottom two open down. These little yellow ticks represent where I don't cut out the door. So I'll be cutting, leave a space, cut, leave a space, cut, leave a space. And I'll actually leave a space less than half the size of that yellow tape, just a tick. That way the door stays in place. I can go inside, I can see the cut lines, clear tape on one end, sand prep the other end, build an overlap for the door to mate to. So you'll see more about that, but I'm ready to cut them all out. I'm stoked. <laughs> lots and lots of luggage in this scrappy cub. Two people, a lot of backcountry flying, a lot of camping. I got a ton of room for stuff, so let's get the doors in. Back to work. All right, guys, I got this door all cut out. I'm telling you, <laughs> putting up a ruler is a trick I learned. Try it the first time you ever try it, and a multi-tool to cut lines. It is so perfect. I cut the first line against the ruler, got on my calipers, set my tolerance, retaped it so that I could put my hinge in. That hinge will go on the back side underneath there. This will open up this way. So I don't even need to sand that line. I mean, it cuts it perfect. I'll just crack the edge so there's not a sharp edge, and that's done. So I'm gonna get a hinge in it, pull all this stuff off and get a hinge installed. All right guys, so this is the start of a whole bunch of brackets. We got a couple on already. Um, but this is redoing all of the pulleys for the elevator. Because of the rear shock passing through the middle, I knew I'd have to reroute that. And so it's gotta go up and over the shock and back down and get back in plane with perpendicular to the line of movement of the pivot at the back so that the cable stays the same length as you move it forward and back. If it's off at all, when you go one direction, as the pivot arcs around for the two con connecting points, if it's not perpendicular to the average movement exactly, then when you go one way, the arc changes and you get a loose cable on one side tied on the other and that's a really bad problem. So th it's gonna be about six more pulleys to get it to do it. Um, but while I'm at it, I'm changing out all the pulleys in the whole airplane and changing them instead of a bushing, I'm going to ball bearing uh, pulleys throughout so I can tighten up those cables nice and tight and when I move them I won't feel that 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 slide of a bushing bearing but an actual ball bearing on all the pulleys so it should turn out really good but here's one we got several to go so let's reroute a bunch of cables and get this plane done all right guys I'm making right now I need washers but I need them to be chromoly, so I can weld them to chromoly. So I'm just drilling my holes, gonna make washers, and I'm gonna weld them onto this. I need this bracket to be really lightweight, so I used a thin wall, but I need to thicken up the area that I'm bolting the two pulleys to. So I gotta do chromoly. I don't have chromoly washers, so we'll just cut some up, make it own, weld them onto here. There's a reason I keep all these random strips i had these made in a, about 15 different gauges and thicknesses but so i can do stuff like this i needed this washer these washers there's actually three different thicknesses in there and i need them at each thickness to get the spacing of my pulleys perfect so this would have been hard to find online the exact thickness and size i wanted so just make your own parts done you can see i carried the top a little higher this is so that I can drill some holes to put a pin across, keep the cable from jumping out of its track. But perfect spacing I needed to get the cables to align up so that there's no, um, the cables aren't trying to track on or off. So anyway, that's done. Let's go put it in the airplane. All right, guys, this went really fast. All these right here, this is the hinge line. If you look in there, you can see the hinge, which you can't have glue on it. So um, what you can't tell is I put a little fine tape. <laughs> That's hard, you gotta get your magnifying glass out. 
because you've got to tape right to the edge of the opening where the hinge pivot is exactly on both sides so no resin or bonding glue or agent can get into the hinge line. And then you attach it all the way down with Clecos. Um, the hinge is done, base is set. Now, I want this to be clear carbon on Scrappy, a big chunk of the plane. Not sure which parts will be and not, but a lot of it I want to just see raw carbon. That's coming along so well, I'm just not gonna need body work and I wanna just show this carbon off. It's gonna really turn out nice. So all these holes, there's a way to fill holes in carbon fiber where you don't see it. Typically, after you pull all these out after the glue's dried, you'd have all these holes all over in the plane and you wouldn't care because you'd fill it with a body filler, paint right over it. Since I want to see clear carbon, the trick to doing that after I pull these all out is put a piece of duct tape right across the top of those holes. Scrape it with your fingernail really good on this side, on both all those holes, go on the other side, squish in resin back into that hole, put a piece of pill ply over top of that resin, squeegee it, it holds the resin through that hole, and it's unbelievable. After that all dries and you pull it all off, you won't even see or feel those holes. They'll blend right up, and because the clear resin is adjacent to the black carbon, the black reflects into that clear and it just disappears. So if you look real close, I mean really close, you might find it, but it's really amazing how much you can just bury those holes. So that's something I'll do later. This is gonna dry up. I've got all this cut out on the door. I've got a couple more hinges to put on the bottom. And then I've got to do my overlap or the stop for the door to go against. I'll do reinforcing around the edge of the door. And then I've got to do raised reinforcement bumps that X through this door, picture frame it out. So when I open this door, it doesn't want to flex around or bend in the wind. So I'll do that later. But uh, right now I'm really excited. I'm going to start cutting these out, set some more hinges. So time to get back to work. All right, guys, so what I'm doing now, I've got the hinge in, I've got little ticks cut. Well, I've got the whole thing cut out and I'm left little ticks where I haven't cut it to keep the door in place. This is to make the door more rigid. It will flex the arc of the frame. And then I'm gonna stick this to the back side of the door, three more layers of carbon to it. Uh, I'm gonna sand this out so these edges aren't sharp. I'll, round, I'll actually not round them all make them a long slant and slope so the carbon comes across here has a nice gradual slope it helps the carbon not wrinkle up at this edge so i got a little sanding to do we're going to bond this to the back and uh, that's going to have to get my door so when i open and close it it doesn't want to flex around so much so back to work that's awesome all right, guys, so that's how it's done. We'll peel off uh, the edges, but there's my door all made in place and extremely solid. <laughs> it has like, no twist to it. That is so strong. Underneath, you can see the three circles. I did the honeycomb insert. That finish just plain straight across. So, well, I couldn't be happier with that door check all right guys so i'm so excited about this door it turned out so great obviously when you build it in place like this it's not kind of a perfect fit it is exact so there's no gap it seals tight this overlap edge i laid up uh, last night um, is perfect because it's paired to the other side we clear taped that now i'm going to cut the line around it and cut off this extra carbon fiber from laying up the overlapping lip. And uh, we'll close it up, I'll show you how it all works, but I could not be happier. <laughs> it's perfect. Back to work. <laughs> <laughs> all right guys really fast part this is a cup crafters part love it works great 
The only thing is my new panel doesn't need all these switches in it, so I don't want these holes. So I'm gonna make a new one. Quick way to do that, I'll just use this as a template in this hole, because there is a taper to it. Put down a clean sheet of aluminum, duct tape some aluminum angle. There's the start. Here's carbon laid up. One down, one to go, back to work. All right guys, so we got these parts made. Extremely strong. And this is the part we kind of templated after. Um, Top Crafters part, it's awesome. Extremely lightweight. It had a bunch of switches in it. We pulled them out. This big mess we made on here with tape is kind of a template, <laughs> the start of a template, where I got bars, the window, the back. Anyway, I'm just making this part longer because I'm changing a few things. I want to not see into the front of my wing, which is changing, so this part doesn't work. So I'm changing the shape of the front of the wing, moving a little bit back, uh, the carbon back this way to close out one other area. So original locations and <laughs> looks funny, but it's gonna turn out awesome. So now you can see, if you look up here, I weld, added some weld brackets. So that is really secure, won't move at all. Attached it here, and you, but I can still pull it off, service it, cover it back up, and it just kind of cleans up and finishes the trim around the window. So it also ended up still being, still being less weight, even though it's about six inches longer per side. So carbon fiber, less weight, little more trim and finish. I'm happy with it. Let's go back to work. All right, guys, so I, I might have got a little carried away here, but ultimately now that I'm done with the project, I think it's going to be worth it. So these are my little key lock tumblers for locking my doors on the belly pod and on the side. And typically they come with a little plate like this, and this plate has a slotted edge to match the nipped off edges of this part so that when you turn the key, this can't rotate if this nut were loose. Hope that's making sense so far. And this part you would rivet in and then it has this straight edge on it. Here's the problem that was bothering me. And uh, I, I bought several different brands, different kinds, and uh, each one of them, this plate, when I put it on here, has a lot of play. See this movement back and forth? That movement, though the plate wouldn't move on the back side of the carbon fiber to my door, this front black face that is against the paint would twist like this on my paint. And eventually I'd start seeing an edge and grit coming out from underneath it. And it was bugging me. So I decided to make my own. These are coated steel. This is aluminum, so this is really lightweight. So there is a little bit of benefit. But if I put these in the plate, I just made, there is no movement. It is absolutely locked. So that's the benefit. I put four rivet holes instead of two. I don't know if it was worth the work, but <laughs> here's all my backing plates for all my locks all over the aircraft. Um, got a really high end tumbler lock. I got all matching keys. So even though I got a zillion keys, um, I got the matching set to all the tumblers. I gotta go stick them in the plane. There was another problem. <laughs> you can get the spinning latch that goes around the back flat. You can get a partial offset. You can get a 5 eighths offset. Fortunately, the thickness of my carbon fiber on Scrappy does not match any available offset for the turning lock, which means, which is fine, I've used them in the past. You can build up carbon fiber layer or you can bolt a little offset plate inside the aircraft that this swinging arm pivots onto and then has a nice tight compression fit so the door doesn't chatter or some people would just let the door wiggle a little and i guess that's fine um, but <laughs> i decided to make these all custom as well drew them all on the computer drew in the door locations measured the thickness of the carbon fiber and then custom punched and bent all of my own tabs exactly what i need so good grief i don't know if it was worth all the extra work but now that it's done, I'm gonna go install it and I'm gonna say it was worth it. <laughs> Let's get back to it. 
So for a quick comparison, I like to always show some weights. Sometimes I go up because I wanna make some enhancements, like an engine went way up. <laughs> so I'm trying to come down every chance I get in weight, overall weight. So here's all the work I did to take the play out of my key locks that are throughout all my doors and access panels. And um, the ordered units and the, my own made ones, even though mine are bigger to get the offset I need, they're much less weight and I use a hardened aluminum so it doesn't bend very easy. That was a very difficult bend, but you can see how well they all turned out. Very symmetrical with punched holes in the end, I don't know if you can see that, that are squared off so things can't rotate. So we're gonna do a quick comparison. Here is nine latches that I need with custom parts you can just or original parts, because I drop everything on the floor. <laughs> There's original parts that you can just buy. We have 215 grams to do nine latches. I'm not worrying about the key tumblers because I'm using the same one on all of them. But then these are all the parts I made out of aluminum instead of steel with the four rivet points instead of two to make sure I got a better bind. And my parts, same count, 82 grams it's actually a pretty big difference overall it doesn't make up for an engine but i'm doing this dozens of times all over the place and lots of little things and it's adding up so we'll just keep going we'll never get there it's going to be a little bit heavier cub but we're going to throw some horsepower at it and some giant wings so it's all about wing loading so i'm going to get as close as i can make the wings match let's get back to work All right, there's my three quarter inch overlap. That's what I'll attach the latches to, but that is absolutely perfect. I think I'm gonna put a little air strut on it that holds the door up in this position for me. It'll be easy to load and unload. I'm gonna do something really cool with that. I want the strut to have a dual purpose. So I'm gonna change the over center pivot moment of the strut on the way I build the la uh, overlapping hinge connection point so that when I get here, the strut pushes the door open and holds it for me. And when I get to here, it transitions to neutral with the same strut. And as I go further, the strut connection point pivots into the other side of hinge point on the hinge. And that will use the same strut that's getting pushed one way at this transition. It's gonna neutralize the hinge fulcrum is going to move to the top and then the strut will then move back outward, constant pressure and suck the door out of my hand and pull it to the plane and actually be putting pressure over center, putting the door into the plane. Pull it to here, it'll have force, neutral and then let go and it will open itself. So that's the start or almost finished of my new door. Back to all right guys, let me show you what I'm working on now. It's pretty cool. Uh, the door's done. I've got this hinge pin. This is inside. I just pulled it out of this hinge. So if I ever need to really work on the plane, I can pop that right off. There's the door. And now I have better access to get in to work on the plane. So right now, if you come on and take a look inside, all this metal frame, the wire or the cable for the rudder cables are inside here and inside here. So it's the last of a couple more molds. I'm only, probably only 15 or 20 more carbon fiber molds left. And I'm probably near a hundred. I don't know, we'll see when I'm done, but um, I'm really close to being done with all the carbon fiber parts. So I'm gonna lay up the carbon fiber. It closes out all the luggage area so that no luggage can hit any cables, any controls, any fuel lines, everything is hidden all the way from the pedals to the back. So I'm gonna carbon those up, make two more up front, a couple of decorative interior side panels out of carbon fiber, and some foot rests, some big foot rests for the person in the back seat to have a place to plant their feet so that they're not kind of feeling like they're sliding around in the seat. So, I think that's it. Oh, well, take that back. Then later, great big giant carbon fiber wings for my gear legs. <laughs> Let's get back to work. 
All right, guys, so I'm really excited about these doors. They're coming together great. Um, I just trimmed this one out. I gotta trim this one out. I've gotta do some, a little bit of sanding under here and these doors will come a lot further down and out of the way. So, uh, but so far, so good. Doesn't get much better than that, so. Um, I don't know, I feel like I, uh, <laughs> that little game when you, doctor, when you hold tweezers and try and pull bones out of a body. <laughs> That's what I feel like I'm trying to do with this. Because I want to do this so I don't have to paint it, which means no room for body work, body filler. So, man, I've never gone so slow with this thing. <laughs> but it's turning out lucky so far. Back to work. <laughs> All right, guys, I want to pause the work on Scrappy. Just to do a shout out and say thanks so much to Ben, 14-year-old kid, and his father, Ed. Ben wrote me this letter, and it just made my day. All of you that have written me letters, I wish I could comment on every one of them. I am so appreciative, they just, I love to get these things, all the new people getting into aviation. I wanted to share this one because it's extra special to me. Um, 14 year old son and his dad working together and uh, they actually get together to watch these scrappy videos and then do it as a family. So a little father son um, time together. On top of that, they work together building things and they made me some gifts. <laughs> this is cool. I'm going to hang all these on my wall. Back to work, Scrappy. Um, we got a stole plane, <laughs> M. Patey, USA, awesome, and flying cowboys. So these are so cool. Anyway, they have a little uh, company it's called Call, Call Sign Freedom. I looked into it. Apparently, 25% of the money they make on these goes to local law enforcement and wellness programs for military, and uh, it's just amazing. To see a family spend time together, work together, and play together. And I read in their letter, they even went and got a little, a little stole RC bush plane to get started in aviation, and they want to get into flying. And they're actually landing it and setting up a little course to compete stole contests with a little RC plane. So father and sons working together, playing together, watching videos together, getting into aviation. I couldn't think of anything cooler. So, and then spending time with their business to give back. That's what we should all be doing. So thank you guys, Ben and Ed, you're the best. Thank you so much, all of you. And uh, I'm gonna get back to work. All right guys, hope you liked that video. It wasn't one of my crazier ones, but we have some wild videos coming up. We have drop tests coming up, rocket launches coming up, finishing of some landing gear coming up with airfoil carbon fiber wings. So I hope you follow, like, and subscribe. Join me on the next round. We'll see you soon.